Daniel and the End of Times. The story of Daniel and his friends is the story of Israel that failed to happen. Namely, to become a model of God's representative that the world will follow. And also to become a witness to the world of their God being the only God. Last week we started a study on preparation for the end time. And we established the base and the context for what this end is about. It's about a rescue mission and the key is in restoring trust. The only way to build trust is through experience. And God is fully dedicated and committed to do the impossible for us to give a chance for a relationship. But he needs us to testify and to be witnesses about it because this is how people learn. The story of Daniel and his friends is very powerful with big lessons for us. Yeah, Daniel believed strongly in what God has instructed his people, Israel, even to the point of what to eat and what not to eat. The way he envisioned success and prosperity was with the help of this knowledge. Unfortunately, it was in a contrast with what the Babylons believed and practiced as a diet. This clash of philosophies and practices can produce only one winner. And since there was an enormous gap, distance between those two practices, it was expected that the outcome will be even more revealing. And as we read in verse 20, chapter 1 of the book of Daniel, as a conclusion, King Nebuchadnezzar found them ten times better than any magician and any enchanter in his whole kingdom. God's wisdom was glorified. Many of us are not captives like the young Israelites were, but some may be. However, we are all going through very similar situations, maybe even on a daily basis. Situations where we may find it wiser to compromise in the smaller things and avoid to create unnecessary noise. <laughs> this may be even a good thing. However, the point is that when we stand for God, we give him the opportunity to manifest what he can do for us. And it wasn't about the diet. I'm not talking about the health benefits here. But the king saw that these young kids had something different. They were not depending on fancy food, medications, drugs, and stimulants, but they had a relationship and dependence on God, who was supporting them and empowering them. So far we witnessed the faithfulness of Daniel in following God's good and righteous command. In chapter 2, Daniel reveals his dependence on God. And Moreover, thanks to Daniel, we, have, we can find out that our God is one with reputation who knows it all, even the intimate dream of a king and its meaning. When thinking about it, I'm not sure which one is more amazing, a prophetic dream of a statue that points out to the future of thousand years to come, or the ability of God to know everything, revealer of secrets. Both are so attractive to my mind. Thanks to Daniel's humility, God was glorified again. Who doesn't want to know the future or to know things that no one else knows? Even those that are not very big on knowledge that is acquired through learning and studies want to know this stuff. Just give me the lottery ticket numbers for tomorrow, please. God knows everything, but can we handle it? He holds the future, but the most important part is how are we going to get there? The point is to build trust and to open up for God. This is what prophecies are about. And yes, it is about humility. We get to chapter 3 of, in the book of Daniel and the story there is not as peaceful and as experimental as the story in chapter 1. Yes, the story in chapter 2 sounded like some people might die if they don't reveal the, the, the king's dream. However, in chapter 3, people were really thrown in the fiery furnace that was heated seven times more than usual. Daniel's friends refused to fall down and worship the image of God that the king made, and he became furious. 
the clash of differences now has grown to its entirety. It's do or die. It's worship my image of God or worship your God. The king demanded acknowledgement, submission, unquestionable subordination to him. <laughs> Strangely enough, at the end of the chapter, the king changes his mind and he praises the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego for protecting this, their lives in the fiery furnace. A central issue in the controversy between good and evil is worship. Who is worthy to be worshipped? Who deserves our gratitude, respect and worship? It's not a small thing. It's not about pride, but about a statement for what or who is the most important in our life. This young man had a powerful testimony. King, you have our respect and loyalty. But there is only one God, and we owe our lives to Him. These events didn't happen at the end of times, but they are all about the same issue, the same challenges and testimony. All that happened and all that we read so far in chapter 1, 2, and 3 did not work in the benefit of King Nebuchadnezzar to humble himself, to accept the God of Daniel as his own. He had a dream, though, that foretold his fate in an image of a tree that would be cut down. And more vividly, there was a voice that spoke to him. Verse 31 in chapter, three, uh, chapter 4 we read, Your royal authority has been taken away from you. If you want your kingdom back, it will happen when you acknowledge that heaven rules. Verse 26. He did not until after his sanity was restored. The king, be the king became a converted believer, a converted Gentile. And this is a very big point here. It's not just about knowledge. The brain can realize and conclude that yes, the God of these Israelites is the only and true God. I mean, you have to be blind not to see it displayed with such power and clarity. But something has to break in the heart. It has to hit home there. Our paths are different, but the greatest joy for God is reserved for the most undeserving soul that gives up the resistance and accepts to let him in. Daniel's faithfulness and his humble character is what provided a way of communication between God and King, and it's what it does it today in the end times too. However, it's always God's voice and his personal touch that converts the soul. Daniel had a very eventful life. His heart was beating with love and concerns about God's people and how was this whole controversy going to end. He wanted so much to be able to see how things were going to develop. But this was reserved for us at the end of times. Daniel left us some powerful messages through the prophecies that he received from God. But his life and example, his humility and faithfulness are a shining testimony for what it is all about. Next week we're going to be talking about Jesus and the book of Revelation.